Yo, I think from a product basis, this was kind of what folks expected for the most part, right? Uh, I would say the, 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 the two, three things that really surprised me, the one is uh, the consistent price increases you saw across the board. Uh, you know, Josh talked about the new AirPods at 179. That's 13% more expensive than the one that's out there right now. Uh, the MacBook Pro, the MacBook uh, you know, Max that they have, those are, again, 5 6% more expensive than the one that was before. So I think the price increases that Apple is kind of implementing is very notable. Uh, should provide you a nice little runway for revenue growth as well over time. Uh, the second thing I'd say that's really impressive is the Apple processors, the M1 and the M1 Max they came out with or they talked about, uh, massive advantage compared to what, you know, the traditional processor CPU companies are doing right now. These are for the high end today, I get it, but in two, three, four years, as they go across the board, I think this could lay the groundwork for that 10% of the business that's macro driven to drive a healthy amount of share gain and acceleration. Do, do those processors, apart from just delivering more power, do they help them on their margins as well because they're kind of more internal driven and to, even on the sort of supply chain side of things too? You know, um, absolutely, right? So they, if you think about it, if in the past we were buying this processor from Intel uh, and you had to pay whatever semiconductor margins are, 60-65%, you can sort of keep those in-house and either use it as a lever to be more aggressive at pricing, which Apple will never do, or use it as a way to expand your own product margin profile, which is what I think they are doing. So I think it helps with differentiation of your product because they're willing to innovate, uh, but it absolutely also helps them uh, have a better margin structure than they would have if they're buying these things from other vendors in the semiconductor chain. Speaking of the chips, just the fact, Amit, that they are able to announce these big innovations in hardware with new products in the middle of this giant global chip shortage, how, how unusual is that in the space? You know, uh, it, it's really unusual unless you're Apple who kind of controls or accounts for 15, 20% of revenues uh, for most semiconductor fab companies, right? Uh, it's about, it not only is what they're doing extremely unusual, but these new processes are actually running on five nanometer, the bleeding edge next gen uh, processor technology, uh, which sort of makes it all the more impressive that a, not only were they able to get TSMC or someone to scale this up, but also ensure that they have enough capacity to launch these devices. What's your take on, on the latest installment from, from the AirPods? Uh, are these a big improvement? Uh, will they drive significant demand? Uh, you know, the $179 price, uh, you know, the sticker price, if you made 13% higher than the last one, it looks a lot like the Pro, by the way, right? The AirPods Pro, so I think that's a positive. Uh, our take in general with variables is being, uh, despite what we see in New York or SF, uh, the attach rates on AirPods are less than 10% of the iPhone ecosystem. Uh, so I do think as you see more and more people adopt this, you could see this 5% of revenue, I think Josh said 5%. This could be 10, 12% in the next five, six years for them. So I do think this drives a lot of growth and a lower price point versus the Pro Max that they have should be a positive.